Hey y'all, hey y'all, what is up, what is up? Your girl G here, welcome back to my channel. Um, I am gonna talk really fast about Put A Ring On It. I missed the past couple episodes, so I just wanted to dissect this one really fast before I get into Love & Marriage Huntsville, as well as Love & Marriage DC. Y'all, looks like Love & Marriage DC might be, might be doing some things. Carlos King is killing it. Not only does he have Love & Marriage Huntsville DC, but he has the new show called The Nightcap. You are doing it, Mr. Carlos King. But before we get into that, y'all, I'm going to talk about putting a ring on it. This, ep this, this episode only solidifies that all these women, as much as they is complaining, ain't going no fucking where. Maybe besides Shorty. Shorty may be ready to get the fuck out of, all, out of here. But um, as far as Charlena and Shay, y'all might as well quit y'all, you know, complaining. Quit y'all's chin, okay? Because y'all not going nowhere. Like, it just, it just is what it is. But until y'all decide y'all tired of the boo, you know, I guess stop complaining. You know, just be quiet. Um, But yeah, let's go ahead and get to the episode because all of these, because I got to get into, okay? I don't quite remember, like, air everything, but we just going to, you know, knock out all the, the main juicy bits, okay? So everybody, we pick up where we left off. Everybody's in the counseling session with, um with Dr. Nicole and I think we actually were talking to Charlena and Otis and basically they keep having the same issue of Otis being a hypocrite you know they talk about the conversation that they had and you know he apologized but at this point Charlena doesn't quite know if she believes it that apology last episode was bull Otis couldn't even get like he is just emotionally stoic he does not I don't know how she fell in love with that man in the first place because he just is a just facade like it's just nothing is there and in the way that he tries to apologize is not because he's actually sorry it's because he just doesn't want Charlene to go anywhere like let me just do it so she don't leave you know um and so now they keep getting at this crossroads of like is he actually capable of giving Charlene what she wants uh then we talked to uh Shay and Fonzo Shay had last previously she talked to her mother her aunts and everything basically like baby look when you with a man you have to stick to your boundaries point blank period when you with anybody stick to your boundaries because once they cross it the first time and get away with it nine times out of ten they're gonna do the shit again so Shay you know she's having this issue with Fonzo about you know intermingling with you know his family and actually trying to be involved but Fonzo has to realize like you're responsible for this mess because you don't want Shay the baby mom and what he's basically revealing is oh they might quite blame her a little bit because you know he ain't really in things with the baby mom but they just phased out so they just kind of view Shay as this woman that was oh she's the reason that you you and the baby mama ain't together and then his mama I'm sure views her that way because he says that the mama and the baby mama are like close. They stick as thieves. They are actually going on vacation together as we saw. S Ooh, sorry y'all. Ooh, hit me in my chest. Um, so yeah, you know, Shay is really trying to have Fonzo uh, initiate that, but his old uh -huh, goofy ass, um, will not. And then you want to keep with the, I mean, I don't know. I mean, what do you want me to do? I mean, I don't know. His answer for everything is, I don't know. And it's just like pissing me off because like, bro, you do know. And the dude that Shay went on a date with this episode was golden. Like what she needed to hear. Um, then we get to Kenneth and Shorty. Shorty, she's digging Mr. Tavy. Okay. Or is it Tazy? I think it's Tavy. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's Tavy. Um, so she went on a date with him the second date and she digs it. You know, she likes his vibe, his energy, you know, he's well to do, you know, she ain't got to worry about, um, you know, some things and, uh, and at this point, Kenneth, he still wants to hit her with them. I mean, what you want to do, shawty, you know, it, what, you heard me, you know, that's all he want to do. I'm, I know I'm a good man. You heard me. I, I know what I bring to the table. You heard me. All that type of Nolan's bullshit. Boy, obviously you ain't doing enough. And if you had enough to roll out, if you had enough to leave, you would have left. Or you wouldn't have been stalking her to find where her new apartment was because you just don't want to admit that you're going to have to kick it on your brother's couch or your mama's couch. Point blank, period. So she decides she wants to go on a third date with Tavy. And Ken, if you can tell, is just, he, he, he don't like it. Um, Charlena and oh, I know what it was. 
she um uh was talking about her date with old dude and her date she was like yeah you know i don't think i want to go on a date with him because you know he just you know he was basically just kind of telling me that he wanted to take me from my boyfriend and uh she was like you know i just don't want to i i that's not the goal for me you know i actually want to work on things so you know i don't want to do that and so otis basically was like well you know um i i'm glad she want to work on things but for me uh uh what i'm hearing is you know uh to go on this person he perceived you you know as a weak woman and she was like i ain't weak he's like i'm not calling you weak oh but otis uh, everybody had the reaction of like like you call her a weak woman and Fonzo he just over there giggling and Shay was like uh uh like she not a weak woman like you trying to call her weak and Shawty tried to be like I don't think he meant it maliciously but he he didn't meant it the way he said it or whatever and it's like bruh what you really was trying to say is oh what were you doing for him to make you feel like for to make him feel like he could take you from you know, from me, what were you doing type stuff? Like, oh, she's a weak woman. So you must've been giving off the vibe that you easily to fuck or something like that. Like, that's what you were trying to throw on her. Just like you were trying to be, you know, subliminal with the, oh, go take a shower. You're dirty. Like, oh, this, you ain't slick. And he always wants to pull the, oh, you know, that's not what I, that's not what I was meaning. But everybody else in the room knows what you're meaning but you want to keep pulling the. I, that's not how I said it like if you understood it that way you know that's how it came across to you but that's not what I'm saying bullshit that bruh you not slick Otis you not like you not like you not like people I tell you that's one of the top things y'all have heard me say this before do not play on my intelligence like that sh pisses me off more than anything because you try to play me for dumb and I'm not. And you know I'm not. So it's like, you know, I know you know that you fucking up and you don't want to cop to it. Like, that would aggravate me. I don't know how she stays with Otis. He must be dropping some good D with his rec receding ass hairline with his Beijing ass. Um, so yeah, so uh, the task for all of them is Shawty's going to go on another date with Tavy. Kenneth is going to have a solo session with the doctor. Um, Charlena and Otis, they have a little exercise and Fonzo and Shay are going to each go on, um, another date. So we get to Shorty and her date with Tavy. Like it's simple. Like she's digging Tavy. I, for some reason, don't think Shorty is Tavy's like initial type, but they do have a good time together. Tavy's really fun. And she needs somebody, I think, just to, to date a little bit. Like, after getting out of a relationship with Kenneth, should she decide to leave, you know, she doesn't need to hop into something else. Like, he would be a good dude to just, you know, kick it, vibe with, have a little companionship with. Like, because he works, he has his business. And then, like, you work and y'all just kind of hook up on the weekend. You know, cheers to the freaking weekend. I drink to that. You know, just have a little yang, yang, yang with him. I think that would be the perfect thing. But she laughed and she's like, damn, you know, this is our third date. And she was like, he was like, okay. She was like, are we going to have the what are we conversation? He was like, no, but you know, I'm just trying to figure out like, okay, you know, this is our third date. And she's like, yeah, I know we got another one. It might low key be cheating. Like, and because I mean, in some way, like most people would view it that way. But at this point, I don't think Shawty give a damn. So Kenneth, he over there at the house that he said he paid money for at the end of the episode that he put in on, um, uh, Dr. Nicole swings by and she's looking at Kenneth like, Mr. Kenneth, you know, what's going on, Mr. Kenneth? And all he want to say is, man, she dig at me. Man, she, 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 she like a little pit bull chihuahua. She may be small, but she just know how to come on my manhood. You heard me? You know, I be giving everything to this woman. And, you know, she just always want to beat me down, make me feel less than, you know, talking about what she talking about, the way she want to throw stuff in my face. And they do a flashback to the time that Shorty said, it just kind of seems like you want established women when you're not established yourself. Is she being hard or is she telling the truth and you don't like it? That's what a lot of you men who want to be coddled, that's what y'all need to start thinking. Is it that she's being harsh and trying to emasculate you or is it that she's telling the truth and you don't like it? Which one is it? Which one is it? Because Kenneth, at the end of the day, you... 
Uh, you wanna you you gave that girl three occupations when she asked you what you do. What do you do? Oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Okay, so you a food blogger? Uh, you a business owner? Uh, like you do security? Like you? Uh, huh? That don't sound like anybody that's an when anybody says, "Oh, I'm an entrepreneur," and ends it right there. <laughs> that means they ain't got no fucking job. Period. Um, so yeah, uh, so he just kind of like, is just being baby, especially by his family. Um, you can tell from the last episode. And so she was like, well, in these situations that y'all are arguing, you also have to dress like what part you play in it, Mr. Kenneth. Now she killed Mr. Kenneth. Like what part do you play in that? And the thing is, you want to talk about, oh, she do me so bad. Why am I still here? I just love her so much at this point. I'm just numb to it. Then walk the fuck away. Then walk away. Because last time she had to walk away and you damn near stalked her back into your life. Like, well, actually not. You did stalk her back into your life. And the fact that you're doing shit like taking pictures of her bank account information. Shorty, if you have not switched your bank account over or got a new bank account yet, girl, you is tripping. You need to... I really hope you change your bank account information after he did that. Cause that right there is telling the fact that he's already come for your job, tried to blast you on social media, stalked you to your new apartment. Like, ma'am it's giving the signs. These are the signs, you know, I saw a sign. I opened up my eyes. I saw a sign. Like bitch, <laughs> can't be a sign your sign. The universe is telling you, girl, he cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Um, so now, basically, Dr. Nicole has to give him, like, this, okay, what do you want to do, like, conversation, because if you want to work on it with her, you have to address, like, the issue at hand, and Kenneth, like, he wants to keep putting, like, oh, she downs me, but you're not addressing, in particular, what she's saying to you, and in particular, what she's saying to you is, you are not established, and so to combat that, you need to be, like, well, no, this is how I'm established, this is what I'm doing. These are the steps I'm taking to be so-and-so a better man for you. But you can't do that because you're not doing those things and you know that. So instead you want to pick fight with her, pick fights with her about how your feelings are hurt instead of addressing everything that she keeps coming to you with, which is how are you asking for these things out of me when y'all like to throw in women's face? Well, what do you bring to the table besides pussy? Well, Mr. Kenneth, what do you bring to the table besides you know, dick and fine dining. Fine dining and dick is what I keep saying. That's all he want to offer is fine dining and dick. Eef. Nothing else, Mr. Kenyon. So we move on to Charlena and Mr. Otis doing their little exercise. And they're supposed to write down uh, what they need more from the other partner. Otis, once again with the boo. You know, Charlena writes down, you know, I, you know, need more quality time. And he was like, quality time. Like, we already spend so much time together. You know, we are together a lot. Like, so she's like, no, quality time as in, you know, no distractions. Like, I'm not on my phone. He's like, it's funny you say that, you know, because we be in bed at midnight and you be on your phone scrolling on Instagram. So she's like, is this what we're doing? Like, are we doing tit for tat? Like, every time she said something, it was like he was trying to prove like, well, that's what you do too. And it was like, okay, but guess what? I die when men do this because it's like oh guess what if you want to be a leader that means you have to initiate that means what you want out of your woman you have to be yourself and if you are not those things yourself you know take leadership for her to follow you know you can bring up hey babe like we both can improve on that instead of being like well you do it too like what you're supposed to say is, you know what, I'll do better. And I ask that you do the same thing too. Like there's a way and a delivery, but Otis just wants to do it in a way to always criticize her, which is the next thing she said. You know, I want positive, you know, reinforcement, basically, you know, some, um, uh, what's the word? Encouragement, you know, more encouraging words. And he was like, I do say, you know, oh, I, that I'm proud of you and that you're beautiful. And that's not what she's looking for because you may say those things, but how often you know 
Or is it coming after you already just ripped her to shreds because you want to call it constructive creationism? You know, like you want to call it constructive. I'm try. I I feel like I'm helping her or trying to improve her. And it's like, bruh, like you're not her daddy. Like, yes, as a party, you're supposed to like try to uplift your, you know, your your person that you're partnered with or your spouse or whoever your significant other. But there's a certain way to do it, like. You are not offering constructive criticism. You're not. You're just trying to tell her what she's bad at. You know, constructive criticism criticism comes with not just, oh, a this is what you're doing wrong. It comes with, oh, here's a better way. That's what constructive criticism is. And you can tell that she, he's one of those stonewalling ass niggas. Uh, and stonewalling basically means like, literally like I'm so hard and... I don't give you any emotional um, or sentimental feedback, and which is what a lot of women yearn for. And so men know how to basically ghost her or pull back on, you know, the affection and quality time. And so she basically will run in circles trying to figure out what can I do to get that affection and quality time from him. And that's the cycle that Charlena is in. And unfortunately, I know a friend who's in that same situation. It's very hard to watch when you see like a woman basically running in circles trying to prove herself to this nigga that honestly don't give a damn about you. Like Otis got mommy issues and he and he takes them out on Charlena. He really does. Um... And so now he's like, well, that, you know, I got the same thing out of you. Like, it's very ironic. They have the same things that they want from each other, but in different ways. Like, it was weird. Um, so then we get to um, Shay and Fonzo. So Shay's like, you know, I'm going to try something different. I'm going I'm to listen to doctor. You know, I'm going to let him go do his thing because I need to see what he's going to do. So she's helping him put the bracelet on and everything. She's like, you know, I do see some differences. I said... Bitch, where? <laughs> Bitch, where the difference is? Not because I certainly don't. That nigga still say, I don't know, every episode three or four times. Um, So the girl come and when she said, <laughs> when she said, I don't, I don't go for, for women's men. They come after me. I said, oh shit, she a certified side bitch. I, that is, that is, y'all. She is side chick personified. The way she said it and everything. Oh, I don't go after uh, women's men. They just come after me. Bitch, I, she pretty and everything. And the way she was talking, she definitely is one of those, you know, non-verbal flirters with the, you know, she know what she doing. She know what she doing. Girl, you done been a side chick a, a time or two. I can tell. Um, so she comes in with her cute little outfit and Shay answers the door. Oh my God, you know, you're so cute. And she didn't see the shorts yet until she left, but she comes and sits down and she was like, how are you? And she's like, you know, I'm good. She's like, I have a couple of rules. And she's like, okay. Yeah. She's like, no touching, you know, no exchanging of information, you know, um, what else did she say? Um, you know, no flirting or something like that. And she was like, right. And I'm like, this is shit. You, sh you should be telling Fonzo, not her. Like, the fuck? And then Fonzo comes down, of course. Fonzo is typically most women's type. And he, of course, he wants to wear his iced out Cuban link. So, you know, the bitches know he got money, you know, type stuff. And so she gets up to leave. And you see a little, a little booty cheek, you know, peeking through. A little booty cheek peeking through the bottom. And so Shay decides she gonna walk behind her so basically Fonzo can't get a peek of that ass. So they leave and, you know, Shay's trying to, you know, be different. But it's like, Shay, you ain't doing that much different. So they go and they do a, a sushi rolling, you know, um, cooking class or whatever. And on the way there, they both realize they both Scorpios. Their birthdays literally are a week apart. And so Fonzo, like, when well, you know what they say about Scorpios, she's like, <laughs> you know... <laughs> Basically, we all know Scorpios kind of have the the stereotype of being, you know, super sexual people, you know. Um, so when he said, you know, they basically was giving each other the, you know. Um, so they get there. And so she's like, you know, what's going on with you? And he was just like, you know, I, I, I got to do better because she has a one year old or, or like a little one year old or three year old or something. No, a three year old or something like that. She has one kid. 
And he was like, you know, I, I got to do better, uh, you know, with integrating the families. I realized, you know, it was, I, I kind of was responsible for things not going the best right there. And so uh, he was asking about her hobbies, you know, typical, you know, chit chat and stuff. But the vibe between the two was giving real, um, I want to be in the back seat, relax me, run it back, run it back, run it back, like a track me. Okay. It was giving real. I want you in the back seat, you know, and she was inviting it, you know, if you want another date, and he was uh, to be continued, nigga, you know, you don't go on another date and it's going to piss Shay the fuck off. Um, so speaking of another date, we have Shay go on her date with a dude named Silver, Silver or something like that. Turns out he's a DJ. So they sit down and he's super funny, like super personable. But there was a red flag to me when he said, oh, I got a one year old. Most niggas with a baby under two is still fucking with baby moms. So when he said that, I was like, damn, like he was almost got me. I was like, oh, shoot, you know, he cool, bald headed beard, you know, nice personality on fleek, you know. And then he said, I got a one year old. I was like, let, let, me, let me moonwalk back because messing with a dude who got a, a fresh baby, I'm sorry, but the women. It's very hard for them to let go of the idea of being a family. And men, you know, consequently, unfortunately, are led by their dicks. So if she, he go to drop the baby off and she say, oh, come inside. I want to talk to you about daycare. And then nigga stay instead of till three, he stay until nine. Y'all know what I'm saying. Something popped off. But, you know, so she asked about, him, oh, you have a one-year-old. So she's like, well, how would you handle the situation of, you know, bringing families together? You know, and he was like, it's just simply about communication. Like, I need, you know, the woman, you know, she's, you know, on and single and everything. And I would know, okay, if this woman's going to be in my, not my life. And we've gotten to the point where, okay, I'm feeling you. I want to be with you. And I want to introduce you to my people. Like, it's up to me to bridge that gap. Obviously, Shay's like feeling it because... She was like, well, that's very ironic because that's what I'm dealing with right now. You know, we, I haven't been able to meet that side of his family and dudes straight up told her dudes are simple and they are, they honestly really are. It's, they're so simple that it's annoying. Like it's annoying how simple niggas are. And so it's like, and the fact that they're so simple and when they fuck up and they want to play like it's not what they're doing is what's even more annoying because it's like, bruh. You're not as smart as you think you are, which is why they always have this thing of like, oh, women get away with shit more in, in a relationship than men because, yeah, you niggas is dumb. <laughs> like, point blank, period. So he tells her, like, dudes are simple. Like, if he hasn't introduced you, it's because that's like he's playing games. Like, that's because he doesn't want to. He's making an active decision not to do that. And so, Shay, you need to ask yourself. Why is Fonzo not introducing me to his family? He wants to say, oh, my mom's is close with the baby moms and stuff like that. But I know, and the way that Fonzo has been talking this whole episode or this whole season of, oh, you know, we just kind of phased out. Oh, you know, we ain't necessarily in things, you know, we just kind of phased out type shit. Like, and then when Shay asked, well, well, when did y'all end things? Well, if you ask me, nah, I think, of course I'm asking you. Like, the way he's saying things is making me feel like he was having sex with both of them at the same time future same damn time point blank period and if Shay and baby moms got together and started comparing notes and receipts all hell gonna break loose Fonzo know it so that's why I gotta keep these bitches apart okay as long as they not together and they don't become cool and start talking that's what he he low-key wants that and that's what dude told her he was like he knows what he's doing. Guys know what they're doing. It's just up for women to decide whether they're going to accept the bullshit or not. And so now Shay was like, you know, that's enough. He was like, oh, I said something wrong. She's like, no, you're saying all the right things. And that's the truth. Like, he was laying it out there. Shay, it's like, nut up or shut up at this point. So we get to the end of the episode and everybody's, you know, checking in. And, you know, Charlena and Otis basically talk about the list. And, um... Otis, he was like, you know, we both want equality time, but I guess in a different way. And he's like, basically just turned into an argument because Charlene's like, you know, I want quality time without any distractions. And, you know, I want, you know, a little bit more, you know, positive reinforcement. And Otis like, well, it's so ironic because I do those things, you know. 
And maybe I should just listen to Charlena or Charlie when she says, you know, those are her feelings, you know, even though he basically just kind of like minimized it once again of like, oh, I guess I should just listen to the way she feels, you know, even though I know that I don't do those things, you know, I guess I should just listen to how she feels. Nigga, fuck you and the horse she rode in on. Like, and kick rocks and open toe shoes, basin dusty ass bitch. I can't with Otis. I can't. So then we moved to um, Shay and Fonzo. And Shay was like, you know, my date was really nice. He basically let me know, like, I appreciate him saying it's really just communication. And it's making me realize my relationship. Fonzo, you ain't got no fucking communication. And so Fonzo talks about his date with old girl. And he was like, yeah, you know, she's a very pretty girl. She said, very. And she's like, very. And he was like, yeah, we went on the date. But, you know, without not without Shay establishing some rules first. And she was like, all I did was say, you know, no touching, no exchanging of information. And Dr. Nicole had to tell her, no, you're missing the point. You know, the point is for Fonzo to establish those boundaries. Like, then you really see, like, where he lies in respect to you. You got to allow him to be the one to show you, you know, how he truly feels about you. Well, I mean, I'm taking steps. No, no, that's not what I said, Shay. You're not doing the work, boo-boo. So then uh, we get to Kenneth and 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 Shawty. And basically, Shawty was like, look, at this point, like, I'm digging Tavy. It's making me realize, like, I'm I'm wanting more from Kenneth. You know, how is it that I'm working? You know, I'm if I'm paying majority of the bills, the least you can do is cook a clean or something, you know? And now Kenneth's like, don't, don't make it seem like that because I be paying bills. I be paying bills. You know, ew, I've been paying bills since then. And what is making it feel like is you recently started paying bills. But for majority of that relationship, let's not get it twisted. He was like, oh, you know, you just now started making more money than me. If, if, if you good, if you good, Kenneth, why you not got your own place? Huh? Huh, Kenneth? If you good like that, why you ain't got your own place? It's giving hobosexual, okay? It's giving, I need to dick you down so I can stay at your place. It's giving, I'm going to wake up and cook breakfast. That way she can forget the fact that I really ain't got nothing going on in my life. Like, we see you, Kenneth. And at this point, Shawty, you can tell, is fed up with him. And Kenneth, he wants to pull this, oh, you know, I don't even need to be here. You know what, doctor, you know, get, you know, I, I, you know what, I give her what she want. You know what, this is it for me. And then that's where the episode ended. So, that was put a ring on it. Y'all tell me what you think about it. I'm going to watch Love and Marriage, both of them, and come back and talk to you guys about that. How do you guys feel about Otis and Charlie? Do you guys feel like Shay is actually going to leave, you know, Rick Loss, as some of y'all call it? And Kenneth and Shadi, do you feel like they're actually going to break up? I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Make sure to follow my Instagram and Twitter. Subscribe to my channel, and I will catch you guys later. Deuces.